Come on in tonight. Come in tonight. Hope you had a wonderful, wonderful day. It's Bible study night tonight. We're coming together to celebrate Jesus. We're going to wait. Come in, come in, come in. Good evening, good evening, good evening. Good evening, the great woman of God. My pastor, Pastor William Freelow and First Lady. Good evening. Love you much, Pastor. Miss you so much. Just miss my hugs. Sister Nikki, how you doing tonight? Praying for you. Praying for you. God is doing some great things. I've been praying for you, son. Praying for you. Bless you. Bless you. Brother Danny, good seeing you tonight. So if you come in, just push like and share, share, share. Let's start some watch party. Harry, how you doing tonight? Great woman of God, Cynthia Driver, my sis, what's going on? Hello, hello, hello. Mr. Henderson, how you doing? Brother Frank, how you doing? Oh Lord, I got the great theologian, Alan Phillips. Oh Lord, how you doing tonight? We gotta get together, we ain't talking a while. We gotta go do some lunch and talk and catch up. preached my first sermon. He helped me get through it. I'll never forget that. <laughs> good evening, good evening. I've been listening to this winning season. I mean, I believe it's a winning season for a lot of us. If we can just believe and hold on to our faith. I believe God is going to do some great things. Amen. Cousin, hey, cuz, what's going on? Denise, it's good seeing you. I'm gonna wait about another minute or so and we're gonna get started tonight. I don't plan to be long. I know y'all say, Pastor, every week you say the same thing. If you don't plan to be long, you end up being long. But I, I got a message I believe from God tonight. I ain't Anton. How you doing? The great woman of God. I saw some pictures of, of my Aunt Anton. It's like you getting younger and younger. Shay and Pam are taking great care and Freddie. I can't wait till we get together. It's time for a family reunion for sure. Sister Janice, how you doing? Brother Rodney, how you doing? Thirty more seconds again. Share, share, share. And let's get into the Word of God tonight. Sister Darlene, how are you doing tonight? And don't forget to start a watch party. Some of us can start a watch party tonight. So some of our members be forgetting and they want to come back and see it later. So start a watch party so you can have it tonight. Amen. Hello, Sister BJ. How you doing? The great woman of God. Bless you tonight. Hey, tonight, let's let's get ready to get started. Let's pray. Let's take a couple moments to clear our minds tonight. I, I really believe that this is the time that we all need to be praying. Uh, the Bible said man should always pray and not faint. Uh, remember that everything that we're facing, uh, it didn't catch God by surprise. I, I think some of us forget that what we go through, it doesn't catch God by surprise. Even though it, it uh, catches uh, us by surprise, God already know how he's going to bring victory to the situation. So tonight, let's just pray. Tonight, I just want to pray that tonight, let's just ask God for more of him and less of us. 
So, Father, tonight we come tonight just to give you glory, to give you praise, to thank you for everything. We dare not complain because you allowed us to wake up this morning. We said so much and some people don't realize that somebody didn't wake up this morning. So, Father, thank you for allowing us to see a day that was not promised to us, but your grace and mercy gave us a day, God. So, Father, I just pray that today that as we cry out to you, Father, we cry out for the healing of this nation, God, not just a nation, but the healing of the mindset of your people. Father, we pray that your people are coming back to you. We're humbling ourselves and we're praying and we're seeking your face, God, and then we're making some adjustments in our lives and turning from things that, that don't bring glory and honor to you, God. And Father, you said we do these adjustments and we make these adjustments. You said then you will begin to heal the nation. So Father, we pray for a healing of the nation. Now, Father, we're not asking for material things. We're asking tonight. I'm asking the church to come in agreement tonight that we're asking for more of you and less of us, God. Father, we want more of your word. We want more of your understanding. We want more of your revelation, God. We want to go deeper in you. It's only when we get into you, we become a new creature, God. There are some things that some of us are still struggling with. Father, tonight, I pray that tonight we let go and let God bring our total deliverance, God. Now, Father, you are a healer, God. You are a deliverer. You are a way maker. Everything that we need, God, we find it in you, God. We look to the hills from which cometh our help, for we know our help comes from the Lord. So tonight, Father, I pray that tonight we ask you to connect with us tonight. Father, I'm just a vessel, God. Tonight, you know exactly. You're the great God that knows all of us name by name. You know every thought. You know every intention. You know every motive. And most of all, you know what's in our heart. So tonight, we start out by praying, God, if there be anything that's in our heart that shouldn't be, if there be any reason thing that's unresolved, there be anybody that hurt us, pain, if anything that we're holding against somebody, God, I pray that tonight you remove it, God, because you said in your word, nothing but the pure in heart is going to see God, so tonight I want to see you, God, so Father, give me more of you, God, I want more of you, God, I want to be able to open my mouth and the words, the oracles of God just flow and I pray because you know every situation, you know every need, you know every thought. I pray because I've been in relationship with you. I have the answer, and the answer is in Jesus Christ. That's what the world needs, God. So, Father, I pray while other people are being distracted, we are focused on Jesus. We're focused on his word, God. We're focusing on his steps. He's already ordered our steps. And we are focused on his power that's working in us, God. So, Father, we pray tonight that this word will come alive tonight. We just don't want to hear a sermon, God. We want to hear something that will cause us to change, something that would increase our faith, something that would make us examine ourselves to be more like you, God. So, Father, when people see, I don't want them to see a nice shirt or a nice suit or a body that's been toned up. I want people literally to see you living in us. When I open my mouth, God, I can't speak for nobody else. I want them to hear you're talking through me, God. And, Father, not just, just in a church setting, but I want them to see you in my house. I want them to see you in my kids. I want everything that's connected to me to line up with your word. Now, Father, we were made for one thing, to bring glory and honor to you. And tonight, Father, help us bring glory and honor to you. Now, Father, somebody's hurting tonight. Somebody's battling with a sickness. Somebody's just going through a depression tonight. Father, I know you have the power to set the captives free. What the devil has meant for bad, Father, you are the God of the turnaround. Turn it around tonight, God. Work it out for our good. Now, Father, I can't thank you enough. I can't praise you enough. I can't just, I, every time I think about how great you are, Father, I can't thank you enough. So, Father, 
with a heart of gratitude tonight. We say we love you. We appreciate you. And Father, you have our permission to do everything that you need to do in our lives. It's in the name above every name we pray. It's the name of Jesus Christ we pray. Let the church say amen. Come on, let's give God some praise. Come on, let's put some hearts up or something. Let's give him a praise. If we were in the building, I would tell you to clap your hands, to wave your hands. Let the redeemer of the Lord say something. You ought to be able to testify to somebody. Can't nobody do me like Jesus. Amen, amen. It's not just something I say. I am excited about what God is doing in my life. And I believe that when you are excited about what God is doing in your life, you ought to begin to brag on your God. And let me tell you something. I began to brag. This sermon came for me just bragging on God because, you know, when, when, when God has done some great things in your life, you want to share what God has done for you through it to other people, you know, sometimes your testimony is the, the greatest weapon you can use against the enemy because when you begin to testify how God brought you out, how God set you free, how he gave you another chance, how he's been a provider, how he's been your strength when you were weak, let me tell you something, that ought to catch somebody on fire. So I am the fire that starts the fire. So again, I'm so, so happy about what God is doing in our lives tonight. So I want to get into the message. Like I say, this message came from me just bragging about God. And, and sometimes I, I believe in our lives that we got to start bragging about what God is doing. I was talking to somebody and I, I made the statement, I always win. And, and we begin to go back and forth. They say, well, now, Pastor, you don't always win in everything. I say, yes, I win in everything. Because, you know, when you know who God is and you know who you are in God, and you know that God has the end of every problem, he has the solution to every situation, then guess what? It, it makes you look at things totally different. So tonight, I just want you to title this message tonight. And, and some of you all, you got to have faith to say this. And some of you all, um, you might be on the sideline. Hope we can help you get in the game. So tonight, we're going to talk about I always win. I never lose. <laughs> oh, I'm going to let y'all digest that for a moment because I'm excited about this word. I always win and I never lose. I'm going to try it one more time so you can hear me say this. I always win. I never lose. Let's go to Romans 8 and 37. Uh, and uh, I, I'm going to try to stay calm because I feel... This is one of them messages I want to holler and scream on, but I want to try to teach for a moment. Uh, it says, no, in all these things, we are more than a conqueror through him who loves us. So again, when I say I always win, I never lose. My mindset, I want you to hear me on this here. My mindset has to be either I'm going to win or I'm going to learn. <laughs> that, that's, that's some good revelation right there. See, when I when I get in a situation, I don't look, I look at it in two ways. Either I'm going to win or I'm going to learn. Because either God has brought me through something or he's given me understanding and revelation while I'm in it. So either I'm winning or I'm learning. See, some situation God puts you in, he is giving you understanding about where you are. And see, sometimes when you get understanding and revelation, you don't look at the situation the same way anymore. Because I want you to put this on your paper. In God, there are no losses. We don't lose in God. Either we win or we learn. Because at the end of the day, everything we face, everything we go through is going to work out for our good. That scripture say, in everything, I am more than a conqueror through him who loves me. I'm in him and I already got the victory. In him, I've already got the victory. Whatever I'm facing, my mindset says, as long as I'm in God, I always got the victory. So if I hadn't got the victory yet, that means that God is bringing me to some understanding about my situation. Sometimes what God does, he, he leads us into a situation. 
It might look hopeless. It might not feel good. But in it, he lets you know that I am with you. I promise never to leave you nor forsake you. So in some situation, God allows you to go, even though it don't feel good, you still win. Because as long as I come out with some revelation and some understanding, I'm always going to win. Because you do know, sometimes you go through things, it's not just for you. Sometimes God brings you to a place to give you understanding and victory so you can help somebody else. Somebody ought to say amen right there. So when I say conquer, I am more than a conqueror to gain mastery over a win by overcoming obstacles or oppositions. Let me tell you something. There is no situation that you go through that God can't bring you out. Come on. That's, that's not, when your enemy comes like a flood, the spirit of God, it's the word of God, lifts up a standard against it. So by overcoming the enemy's tactics, it's going to make me stronger. I'm going to say that one more time. I say by overcoming, because we know that when the word is sown, that immediately the enemy comes to try to snatch it away from you. Come to try to make you doubt the word of God. So by overcoming the enemy's tactics, I'm going to become stronger. And I'm, a, I'm going to become more rooted to be able to fight the battles that come against us. Woo! I want that to marinate for a moment. So what God does, he pre prepares you to fight against the enemy. And sometimes when you're going through situations, it might not feel good, but it's making you stronger. It's, it's, it's making you more rooted in God. To where you can stand against the wiles and the tricks of the enemy because you do know he don't fight fair. So again, I always win. I never lose because there is no failure in God. Come on, somebody say there's no failure in God. Even when some, some situations in your life are difficult, we don't lose in those situations. Because as long as we got God, we're always going to win. Even though it might not look good, it might not feel good, God is teaching you something. See, this is what I look at. What are you teaching me, God? Sometimes God is teaching you how to walk by faith and not by sight. Sometimes what God does when he allows you to go through these light affliction, he don't want you to be in your feelings or your emotion. He wants you to know who he is. <laughs> See, I can be very transparent there because a lot of times when we're going through situations, it's easy to get in our feelings. And just because you don't feel God don't mean he ain't there. Just because it might be a mess. But let me tell you something. There are miracles that come out of a mess. It just might be possible that God is trying to get you to trust him and to lean not to your own understanding. He wants you to allow the Holy Spirit to lead you. Because let me tell you something. The Holy Spirit knows where victory is. Amen. So, 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 are you allowing the Spirit to lead you? Because all roads lead to Jesus. So, I want to make sure that we are able to articulate this tonight. Now, I, you know, I keep saying that we don't need emotions. We don't need uh, our, our feelings. We don't need to be leaning to our own understanding. We need to know that we are already conquerors. Somebody say, I'm already conquered that. So if you're in a situation and God has allowed you to go through that situation, come on, either you're going to win or you're going to learn something from it. And when you get through learning something from it, it's going to give you victory. Because not only are you going to be able to help yourself, but you're going to be able to help somebody else. Somebody ought to say amen now. I feel God up in here. So so, so I, I, I have to have a role of victory. And, and there is a playbook. Somebody say a playbook. And the playbook that we all should be following is the Bible. I'm going to say that one more time. There's a role to victory. There's a playbook. Every good team if you got a football team, if you got a basketball team, you have a playbook. It teaches you how to win. And we have a playbook. It's called the Bible. 
And let me tell you something. In this Bible, there are 66 books that teach you how to win. It's 66 books that teach you how to fight against the devil. It's the book, the Bible, that teaches you how to build your faith. It's the book in the Bible that teach you how to call those things aren't though they were. It's the Bible that gives you that power to tell Satan, get thee behind me, Satan. It, it, it's the power of God in his word because you do know his word is a lie. Come on. You can sit it down there but let me tell you something. Just because I sit it on a coffee table, the word is in me. David said the word have I hidden in my heart that I won't sin against thee. So if you're going to always win I want to give you five little points tonight, and I'll be out your way. If you're going to win, if you're going to get to victory, there are five things that I want to talk to you tonight about. Number one, if I'm going to always win and never lose, this is one thing that the believer has to do. I have to, ref I have to refuse to give up. Come on, I, I want to I wanna make sure I articulate that. I have to refuse to give up. See, see, every child of God defeats this evil world by achieving victory through your faith. Let me tell you something. My faith won't let me give up because my faith is rooted and grounded in Jesus Christ. Come on, somebody say I always win. Now, now who wins the battle against the world? Only those who believe. So if I'm going to always win and never lose, I have to refuse to give up. No matter how it looks, no matter how it feels, no matter what it say, no matter what's on paper, I know what God told me. And let me tell you something. It's not over until I win. Calm down, Pastor. I can't calm down. Because this is how I, I get victory. I refuse to give up. See, one thing that I do know, if God is for me, he's more than the world against me. And let me tell you something, as you grow in your faith, you stop looking for people to always validate you, to help you, to give you a word, to prophesy to you. Let me tell you something, when you refuse to give up, guess what? All you need is one word from God, and that one word from God can change your whole life. And not just sometime, forever. Amen. Amen. So again, if, if I'm going to win and never lose, I've got to refuse to give up. And I just need to just stay there for a moment. Too many people give up. Time there's resistance. Time somebody challenges you. Let me tell you something. You, everybody's not going to agree with you always. You just believe what God told you. If God say he going to bless you, forget about what people say. Let me tell you, I can testify. It's the faith just to keep on believing when doors are shutting your face. It, it's, it's the word of God that told you I'm going to bless you, that I'm going to give you the keys to the kingdom. It's refusing to give up on your word. So again, you gotta know, you gotta know who you are, and you gotta know whose you are. I refuse to give up. And in the church, we got too many people giving up. You getting your feelings hurt because somebody don't believe in you. Baby, believe in yourself. Learn how to encourage yourself. Learn how to take this word and stand on this word. Say, listen, like the Hebrew boys say, even if he don't, I know he can. And this is where we stand different from everybody else. See, some of us trying to be so deep and it's really simple. You got to keep your faith intact. The devil ain't after your car. He ain't after all. He's after your faith. Because he know without faith, it's impossible to please God. You said God say he was going to do it. Why did you change? I don't care how long it takes. Come here, Sarah. I don't care how long it takes. If God say he going to do it, he going to do it. Let me calm down because I done got worked up up in here. Ain't it? I done got worked up over here. 
Because this is how I, li I live my life. It's no magical. It ain't nobody just laying hands on you. I've had some great mentors in my life. But let me tell you something. <laughs> the weapons of our warfare are not carnal. Come on. Pick up your weapons and fight back. Refuse to give up. Don't let your promise die. And I need to ask somebody on this on this on this on the screen right now. I want to ask you, why did your promise die? And why did you let it die? Come on. Lazarus would tell you, put me in a tomb. If he calls you, if he says he's going to resurrect you, if he say you're going to be the head not to tell, guess what? He got to get you back up again. So let me move on to my next one. So, so if I'm going to win and not lose, I have to refuse to give up. Number two, I have to stand my ground. Woo! Come on, somebody help me up in there. I have to stand my ground. Uh, when I say stand, what do you mean, Pastor? God has given us strategies to stand against the devil in the Bible. He's given us strategies. He's given us formulas. How to succeed in everything. You are more than a conqueror. To who? Christ Jesus. He loves you. Somebody say, it's God's good pleasure to see you blessed. But let me tell you something. You got to stand your ground. You got to strategize. Get in your Bible. There are scriptures you can stand on, but you have to read it. And you got to follow directions as they appear. The problem with most of us, and I got to say this here, the reason why we're not seeing uh, the, the revelation, we're not seeing the increase, we're not seeing the blessing, we're not seeing the promise, is because we're altering the word of God. You cannot add nothing to it. You can't take nothing away from it. And that's why I try to teach people uh, in the church that let me tell you something. When we get in the building, when people say stuff, you want to make sure it's lining up with the word of God. If you prophesy, it has to line up with the word of God. And how you stand your ground, you got to read the word and follow the directions as they appear. We cannot alter it in any way. They are tried and true past the victory. So my victory comes through the word of God. Stand your ground. Mm. <laughs> it, it ain't, it ain't, it ain't if he come, it's, he's coming. He's coming. Stand your ground. And, and it's funny how now we've got everybody trying to tell you what to do. Let me strategize your life. No, what they need to be saying, let me help you open your Bible and read the word of God for yourself. I can talk to you all day long. I can tell you what's in the word, but you got to believe what's in it. And most people, you're just wasting your money. Because the Bible says, if a man way pleases me. I'll give him the desires of his heart. See, you're trying to skip over it. You're trying to alter it. And that's why people are manipulating uh, 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 the, the, the men and women of God. Listen, you cannot buy a blessing. God blesses who he want to bless. Come on. It was freely given to you. God didn't put no stigma on this here saying uh, you got to believe with a certain. No, believe Jesus Christ and believe his word and you're going to have good success. So it's already proven. It's true. It's the true word to victory. But again, you've got to stand your ground. Somebody ought to say amen. Now, come on, say I'm going to stand my ground. All you need is the word of God. It can bring you through anything. It can heal your body. Come on. It can change your mind. Come on. It can make you brand new from the inside out. Come on. It can change the way you talk. It can make you love people you know don't mean you no good. And you will look at them and say, in your mind, I know what you think about me. And I know you don't like me. But guess what? I'm doing what God told me to do. 
<laughs> Somebody say, stand your ground. You have to stand your ground. So if I'm going to win and never lose, I got to refuse to give up. I got to stand my ground. Come on. Too many people, we are, are, are watering down the word of God to where there's none in effect. You know, you, you, you know, we don't even talk about presenting our bodies a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable before God. We don't talk about that. We think that we can, can manipulate God into blessing us. And then most of the time, most of us, what we call a blessing ain't really a blessing. Because when God bless you, whoo, that's a whole nother sermon. I better leave that for next week. When God bless you, you don't have no room to brag about it. It, 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 people start talking about the blessing because they say stuff like they said, how can she afford that? They'll say what they doing to, 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 to look like that. They look like they're getting you. When God bless you, you know he'll redeem time for you. Come on. When, when people saw you, they saw you down, but sometimes God would take you down and raise you back up. And the same people that saw you go down got to see you come back up. Ooh. Come on, Pastor, calm down tonight. So again, so number three, number three, if I'm going to always win and never lose, I got to focus on the word of God. Somebody say focus on the word of God. Where is your focus? Come on, some of you all want God to do great things, but you're focusing more on your shows. And I'm not knocking all that. But at some time, you got to focus on the word of God. Come on, Atlanta Housewives, I'm not making no fun of that. But I mean, all these shows and love, but what is it doing for you? When do you spend quality time with God saying, God, this time is set aside for you so I can focus on the word of God? Because in this word, I know you got some revelation. You got some strategies for my life. It's some things that you want to do through your word that clean up my heart, to purge my mind. So again, focus on the word of God. Study the books of the Bible. Study the instructions. There are instructions. Continue to meditate on it day and night. And then when you study, obey what's written in the word. Then you'll be able to have good success and prosper in all you do. You cannot skip in this. And I'm telling you, you cannot have true victory without the word of God. Some of you all are relying on a word from a man. And let me tell you, I've been there before. I've been there before where I was always, I was a prophecy junkie because I come out the Baptist church. I didn't even know nothing about God can speak to you. So when I first time uh, somebody spoke to me, it blew me away. I always wanted God to speak to me. But I thank God for my spiritual mother, Johnny May Driver. She said, listen. You ain't got to buy a prophecy. You can open your Bible up and God will talk to you 24 hours a day, seven days a week. If you want to hear to him, wake up in the midnight hour and open up your Bible and he'll speak to your life. Oh, she, she prophesied to me right in the house. She said, you're going to be a wealthy man. But she said, let me tell you something. People are going to see the glory of God on you, and they're going to know you got something. And what they're going to do, they're going to try to get what you got. He said, all you owe is your tithes and your offering. If you want to give something, give it because you want to give it. Don't give it because somebody manipulating you to give it. She changed my life with that. And guess what? I was in thousand dollar line. I was in a five hundred dollar line. I was in a ten. I wanted just to be close to God and see. That's why when people first get saved, we gotta make sure we put people around them to help them because they have this zeal. They just want more of God, not realizing you can be in a church setting and the devil will still be in there. I've seen people who come to church and, and they're successful people and then they get to church. Then you got somebody always want to borrow money and, and this and that. People can't even get the word of God because here you are looking for somebody you can pray on because you won't get in the word so the word can change your life. Focus 
on the word of God. If you want to always win, if you want to always have a smile on your face, I never lose. Because guess what? I'm in God. And there are no losses in God. Come on. What is God revealing to you? Even when storms come. I mean, what, 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 what do you do when you're in a storm? I just got through talking about that. The first thing you should wake up is the word. The word should wake up. And the word is Jesus. Wake up the word. And Jesus is saying, I just got to tell him something. What took you so long? You call your mama. You call the banker. You call the doctor. You call your friend. You call everybody, but you didn't call Jesus. And that's why some of us stay in our storm so long because we never wake up the word of God. And whenever you wake up the word of God, you wake up Jesus. Because Jesus is the word. Woo! Pastor. Somebody say Jesus is the word. So that's why he tells you stuff like this. Put me in remembrance of my word. You, you don't need all this elegance and, and this and this. Father, great Jehovah, God, if it be your will. No, no. Just say, Father, I read your word. You said, if I humble myself under your mighty hand, and if I do right now, obey your word, you would exalt me in due season. God, I'm ready to be exalted so I can bring glory and honor to you. That's what God is looking for. Some of you need to just come down. You're too high. Come on, when I talk to you, I'm talking to myself too. I'm trying to get lower. I, I'm, I'm trying to check myself. I'm trying to check my attitude because I know God is looking for somebody he can show himself strong in. I don't want to come disqualified because you do know you can get disqualified. Moses did all of that stuff. Moses part the Red Sea. He did all of the rocks and water coming out of rocks, but he didn't get to go in the promised land. Why? Because he allowed his emotion, his feelings. And some of us are making ministry about ourselves instead of making it about God. You, you are all upset because somebody don't agree with you. Nobody can never say nothing to you about you. You got to answer for everybody. But when somebody try to check you in that nasty attitude or, or, or the way of thinking, or you always being messy, or you are, no, you got something to say. So again, if I'm going to always win, I, and I, I'm, I'm never going to lose, I have to stay focused on the word. Come on, study it. Read it. Meditate on it. Come on, don't, don't try to alter the word. Obey everything written in it. Only then, somebody put only then, are you able to have great success. <laughs> God want to make your name great. And the hold up ain't God. The hold up is you. Maybe some things that need to die in you. So again, I, I'm, I'm closing because I'm, I'm getting too, too happy up in here because I, I feel God. So again, if I'm going to always win and never lose, number four, I have to speak victory only. I'm going to say it one more time. I have to speak victory only. I'm going to say it one more time. If I'm going to win and never lose, I have to speak victory only. It might look like a losing situation. It might feel like a losing situation. But inside of you, you got to speak victory only. Your word determines your destiny. Woo! I felt that. Your words determine your destiny. destiny. Too often we are careless with our words, thinking they don't really matter or have a meaning, but I'm telling you what you say can become your reality. I'm going to say this again. What you say can become your reality. Uh, what you say today, you will have tomorrow. Keep on saying all that little crazy stuff. Y'all going to kill me. Okay, keep on, keep on. Words have power. And, and Job said this, I'm going to help some of you all. That's why your words are so powerful. Job said, what I feared most have now came upon me. So what are you saying? Because what you're saying is what's manifesting in your life. 
Let me tell you something. Sometimes you go through stuff with people. And let me tell you something. The, 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 the funniest thing to me is how easy we try to give up on people, but God never gave up on us. It's funny how God can give you a pass at everything you do, but, but you can't give nobody else a pass. I have to speak victory only. What are you saying? <laughs> the little man told he said he said God he told God I'm nothing but a child. He said don't say that. And I'm saying to some of you all don't say that. Stop saying that. Come on, call those things on though they were. I'm already blessed. I'm, all, I'm already favored by God. I am the head and not the tail. I'm a lender and not a bar. My way pleases God. I already have the desires of my heart. And let me tell you something. Some of you are, are looking for a spouse and something. But let me tell you something. Let, let me tell you something. If you read the Bible, God put the man to sleep. He didn't wake up the man till the woman was complete. So maybe God is completing some stuff in you. And then maybe God putting, putting some of us to sleep so, so he can deal some stuff with us. So again, make sure that we have always we're speaking victory only. Come on. The doctor say that. That's what he say he see. But I, I believe what God said. I'm healed by the stripes of Jesus Christ. No evil can come my dwelling. I cast down every imagination. So, so, so number four is I have to speak victory only. So, so some of us need to get some awe and anoint, anoint your mouth and say, God, I'm anointing my mouth to speak only victory. I want to say what you say. I want to speak only your words. Line my mouth up with what you say. I don't want to say nothing I say because what I say won't last, but what you say will last forever. You said, let it be, and it was. Come on, I, I just want to help somebody today. We're being too deep. Let's go back to simple, to simple, simple. Let's make it simple, 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 simple. So watch what you say. And, and, and sometimes you got to go back. And, and you know, I, I had to go back. And today, when we, we, I was praying today, I said, God, if I ever said anything that didn't agree with what you said, forgive me. If I allowed my emotions to speak instead of speaking what the word said, forgive me. And I believe some of us need to repent to God. Come on. He asked the disciple, what do you have? What do you have? They said, we got a little money, we got this, this, this. No, we got Jesus. And when we got Jesus, we always win. Somebody said, I'm on the winning team. Last one, and we're going to close this out. Uh, okay, so, so, so if I'm going to always win and never lose, I have to answer every doubt immediately with the word of God. Answer every doubt immediately with the word of God. Anything that comes against the word I've got to cancel it and return it back to the sender because I cannot lose. I'm in my winning season. I'm going to say it in Answer every doubt because doubt will try to come in. When doubt comes in, immediately deal with doubt with the word of God. And when you deal with doubt with the word of God, it casts down every imagination that comes against your promise. When God has made you some promise, let me tell you something. Sometimes God don't tell you, he just tell you he's going to bless you. He don't, he, don't, he don't tell you how long. He don't tell you what you got to go through. But guess what? You're going to get there. So again, so again, I, I've got to answer every doubt immediately with the word of God. So anything that comes against the word of God, I have to cancel it. Come on. That's what, why, do you think, why do you think the Bible says, let the sick say I'm healed? Cancel it with sickness. Cancel it. Any, anything that make you start doubting God, you got to bind that. And just don't bind it. Bind it in the name of Jesus. Send it back to the pits of hell where it belongs. Return to sender. Because I cannot lose. 
And now I'm closing. Now I'm in a winning season. And let me tell you something that I've learned about being in a winning season. Winners hang around winners. Come on, come on, catch on to that. Winners hang around winners. If, if, if whenever people come around me and they start talking all this loose talk and all this, this stuff, you know, man, come on, you're gonna get old too. Now, I mean, I don't hang around nothing like that. I was telling my uncle the other day, you keep on living, you're gonna get all been up. Man, listen, just because you accepted that, I ain't accepting that. I'm on a winning team. Winners hang around with winners. Somebody said winners hang around with winners. So again, I, I just want to make sure that I came in tonight to just, just kind of stir you up tonight. In all these things, what's that thing you're going through? What, what's that situation you're facing? Come on, what's got you crying at night? What's got you worried? What are you fearful about? Come on, let's take the mask off. Come on, you mean 10 years and you still hurt it? You mean you still trying to find your way and the way is written in the word of God? You mean you can't find nothing to be happy about? Have you ever been around some people they just mean? Come on, they, they try to get you in that same old spirit. Why, why are you so happy? Well, baby, the, the, the joy I have, I used to be like you. The joy I have, the world, give, the world didn't give it to me. It came only when I gave, gave it all. In all these things, I'm more than a conqueror through him, through Jesus. He loves me. And let me tell you something that I celebrate. He loved me so much that he waited on me. What do you mean to, to get myself together? What do you mean to, to get hunger? See, see, that's, that's why I get frustrated when people write people off. You don't know what God's going to do. If you, if you saw some of the disciples, the lives they were living, some of you all would have wrote them off a long time ago. You don't know what God is processing into greatness. And some of the folks you looking down on now just might be on the team that God's going to use to be a blessing to your life. Come on. I want to develop some winners. You can't tell me. It, 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 it hurts my heart to where when you come to church, you feel such a heaviness and people heads are down. And sometimes you go in the world, these jokers are so happy. They, they, they're happy being in sin. They got a smile on their face. They hug you. Come on in and celebrate. When you get around believers, oh, well, you know, you ain't got nothing to be happy about. You mean to tell me you got saved to look down on everybody, to point out everybody's faults? You mean you got saved to not be able to spread the love of Jesus Christ? I mean, you know, I can't get over. I'm preaching now, you know, and, and, and still when I walk up in the church, sometimes I get teary eyed because I say, God, you mean I just can't believe you using me like this. All these arrogant preachers, man, listen, can't do this with God to God. And some of us, all we're doing is just quoting some great scriptures and sermons and we're being dramatic and, and being a theologian and we're arguing, but you, your life ain't doing nothing. The world can't even keep you. You tell it how, other people how, how it can keep you. Why it can't keep you? Why it can't turn your heart? And it goes for me too. We have to make those necessary adjustments in our lives. And God wants to get some glory out of our lives. So again, if you are a believer, I, I want you to write this down. I always win. I always win. I never lose. Because there are no losses in Jesus. No losses. There are no losses. Either I'm going to win or I'm going to learn. And let me tell you something. I thank God. For the situations I learned while I was in it. I mean, I learned some things. I learned about his presence. I learned that he'll give you peace. 
I learned that he'll give you strength. I learned that when your mother and father forsake you, he'll take you up. I've learned, I've learned the only person you can count on is God. I love my mother. My mother loves me. But there's been some situations that my mother couldn't help me through. It took Jesus. I was telling, I was talking to my youngest daughter, just, you know, I said, man, listen, you're going to have to just kind of work on, work on you. Just use this time to work on you. I mean, this pandemic ain't bad because some of us, we needed this to work on us. We had every excuse. I don't have time for this. I don't have time for this. Here. No more excuses now. What are you doing with your time? And some of us ain't valuing time. If it's your winning season, why you ain't acting like it's your winning season? You mean to tell me you in a winning season, you using your winning season to catch up on all your shows. You could open your business up. You could have went back to school by now. You could have had a degree. You 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 could have right now they're giving loans out everywhere now. I had a friend say, man, I just I just applied out of the Clip Blue Sky. They gave him twenty thousand. You you could have you could have by the time they pay it back, you could have opened your shop up by now. What are you using the winning season for? So I'm in my winning season. And I want some winners. I want to develop some people who are strong in their faith. Who trust their God with everything they got. Who know that it ain't over till God says it's over. I want some people to look out and say everything, everywhere I walk, everywhere I put my feet to, God has given it to me. Come on. Come on. Some of you all, man, look, I was talking to the woman of God. She said she planted her garden. She said, I love my garden. Man, that, some of us need to plant a garden. We see how God does. Sometimes you put the seed in the ground. You till the ground up then put the seed in the ground. You don't see nothing for a while. But after a while, it comes up. The, the seed starts to developing. Some of us need to put some seed in the ground. Come on, activate your faith. So, again, I, I just thank you tonight, and I just hope this has been a blessing because, I mean, I had, was going to preach something totally different, and God just gave me this here. He gave me, he said, you know, I put it on the other day. I put, hey, I always win. I never lose. And then some people say, I don't agree with that. You can't just say that. Yes, you can. I can say it, and I can stand by what I say because my winning is, is through Jesus Christ. If I'm in him, he in me, I always win. I always win. I'm more than a conqueror through Christ Jesus. I'm more than a conqueror through Christ Jesus. He's my strength. He's my peace. He's my prosperity. He's my hope. He's my joy. He's my wisdom. He's my knowledge. He's my favor. How can you lose? How can you lose? So again, that's all I have tonight. I just wanted to just just, just let it go tonight. I really want to, hey, I, if, I, if I was at, at the church right now in the building, we, we'd be tearing it up right now because I tell you, let's give him some praise. I tell you to reach over and grab a neighbor and tell the neighbor, this is my winning season. <laughs> and, and ask your neighbor this question. If you got somebody close to you, say, are, are we on the same team? See, the, the worst thing you can do is find somebody you think on your team ain't on your team. Sometimes the enemy will send people, they send people, and they'll act like they with you just to study you, find out what you do, then they'll go try to use what they know against you. Are we on the same team? This is the year. I'm I'm I'm, I'm gonna check everybody. I'm gonna try. I'm gonna try the word with the word. I'm gonna try your faith with faith. I'm gonna make sure we on the winning team. We gotta talk alike. We gotta believe alike. How can two or more walk together unless they agree? Can't get no amen now. I refuse to lose. Amen. It went off. See, they tried to go off on them. Somebody give me some hearts on that. We're getting ready to close. Or the, I refuse to lose. I refuse to lose. So again, I thank you again. I want to say uh, I'm so excited about all of our new guests that are uh, uh, checking with us online each day. And, you know, every time we come on Bible study and, and you know, on Sunday mornings, we're right here at 10 o'clock. And uh, until God just give us that full release. Uh, with some people coming back, but we're going to take it slow. You know, again, if you're sick and all this stuff, and let me tell you something, this pandemic is real. It's real. It's real. So again, we want to make sure we slow. I'll give you the date when we're coming back in and we want to make sure 
that you take care of yourself. Put your mask on. Don't have people all coughing in your face today. I was someone today, and this man coughing over everything. You know, man, I just I wanted to say some stuff, but you know, I just say, man, you know, some people are being ignorant about this here. You know, you know, you ain't worried about nobody but yourself. So again, let's be wise. Let's use wisdom. Again, I love all of the new people that have connected with us. We've got people from Jamaica. I got a, a, a sister that we grew up together. She's in Atlanta watching us. I got my Aunt Anto on here watching. My cousins are watching in Seals with both my, We've got people in Louisiana watching us. I just thank God for this here. And let me tell you something. I don't use this platform to promote myself. We're promoting the word of God. And, and, you know, there are a lot of people saying a whole lot of stuff. You know, there's a lot going on in the world. But let me tell you this here. Whatever's right, whatever's wrong, God will deal with it. Now, a lot of stuff is not fair. And I admit that, hey, there's a lot of injustice going on with African-American people. But let me say this here. God is a God. When God gets tired, when God gets tired, he know how to bring Pharaoh to his knees now. That's why a lot of this stuff being exposed now. Now you got all kind of people marching. You got more uh, Caucasian people out there marching than, than African Americans. So again, let's just stay focused on what God is doing. Let's don't get into all this hate. We we are as as believers are to show love, to pray for everybody, pray for everybody. And let me say this here: if you don't keep your mind together, it goes to show you. I don't care who you are. The devil's looking for a mind to take over. That's why you got to stay in your word. You can have one bad day. And let me tell you something, when I worked at the police department, I worked at the prison before. Now all those inmates used to say, I wish I could take that day back. Once you pull the trigger, you can't get that bullet back. So again, make sure you always prayed up. Some of you at home getting frustrated with your kids and all that. Man, get prayed up. Man, for some time to stop and put some worship music on. If situation, husband and wife going at each other because you ain't never been in the room that long and this long a time with you. Now you're seeing things you don't like it. All. No, put some worship music on. Get in your word. Come on, woman of God. Come on, man of God. So again, let's make sure that we stay connected. Remember, we always win. We never lose. So again, I want to thank you tonight for coming on tonight. Uh, I want to ask you again to make sure we stay focused. Focus on God, what is he saying? Get in your word. Study to show yourself approved. Again, make those adjustments. Make those adjustments. Check your heart. Come on, check what you're saying. Come on. You know, and sometimes you, you got to have somebody. You got to have somebody that, that you can trust can tell you about yourself. You got to sometimes ask people how you come off the people. You know, I was talking to somebody today. I said, man, you know, you got to watch how you come off the people because sometimes you don't want your good be evilly spoken of. That's what God said. Don't let your good be evilly spoken of. You know, you don't want to kill your testimony either. Sometimes you, you've been talking to people about Jesus Christ. Then next thing you know, you got all mad and started cussing and everything. You didn't kill your witness. Yeah. So again, we've got to watch everything. And remember, God sees everything. Whatever's right, whatever's wrong, let God deal with it. So I want to pray again. I want to pray. If you got any special requests in your prayer, I want you to make sure you... Uh, you know, notate them or email us, uh, you know, and then again, you know, Palace, I, I want to keep on saying we're going to still give. We want to make sure we're tithing. We want to make sure we're giving to the ministry and to our new friends and family. If you feel like God is leading you to sow a seed, they got some ways you can sow. We don't, if, if you don't give nothing, that's fine too because we don't trip on stuff like that because I believe every ministry that is a God ministry is up to God to take care. He'll get people, he'll touch people's heart. But I know Palace, what he told me, he said he He's going to prosper us. And some of us are being prospering right now. I mean, I had a situation just the uh, other day. Uh, I, I did this little deal and, and, and man, the guy said, man, you lost on that deal there. I told him, I said, listen, I don't lose. So I said, resell it. He got me, you know, you tell the people what's wrong with it. Tell them I want this. And guess what? I didn't lose. I got almost uh, nice, nice, uh, more than what I, I gave. So again, I don't lose. And that's my mindset. I don't lose. 
I always win. I got Jesus, so I always win. So favor's always in my life. So again, I got some ways you can give, cash app, text and go. Make sure we're still giving, sow your seeds, believe God, because I believe that God is testing us to prove us, to see if we can trust Him. Even in the midst of all this going on, can you still trust God? So I want to pray and I'm going to let you go tonight. For a moment, let's just take one moment again. Father, we thank you tonight for your word, God. Thank you, Father, reminding us as long as we stay connected to Jesus, we stay connected to the word, word, and we allow the Holy Spirit to bring revelation about our situation, we always win. Tonight, Father, I speak over the airways tonight. I pray that tonight, through this word, that, Father, this word will be powerful, it will be strong to help us to make those adjustments that we need to make in life. Father, we are on your team, God. Our bodies need to be healthy. Our bodies is the temple of the Holy Spirit, God. I pray that our minds got to be at peace, God. I pray that, Father, our steps are already ordered by you. So, Father, tonight, bring us into full alignment with you. Now, Father, somebody needs a stronger relationship with you, and they don't know where to start. Sometimes just starting, God, help them to understand when they just call your name, that starts the relationship. And, Father, I thank you through the relationship that we have with you. It's not always about us talking. Sometimes just quiet so you can speak to our hearts. So, Father, today, if there be any uncertain about anything, today I bind every attack of the enemy. Whatever the enemy is trying to do, if he's trying to bring sickness in our bodies, he's trying to get us to a place of separation or divorce, if he's trying to take control of our kids, or if he's trying to bring us into a spirit of poverty, if he's trying to make us speak doubt and fear, tonight I take authority over it in the name of Jesus, and I send it back to the pits of hell where it belongs. Tonight, I pray a special blessing over my Aunt Ruth. Touch her. She's been on my spirit, God. And I pray right now, Frank Richardson, Pastor Frank Richardson, God, touch him tonight, God, and his great ministry, God. Father, bless the ministry as he does ministry on this line, God, on Facebook and on the internet, God. I pray that you'll grow his church, God. You don't have to walk in a building. You can get Jesus right where you are. Father, we thank you tonight. Now, Father, I just pray if there be anything that the enemy is trying to do, any attacks that we don't even see coming, Father, cover us with your blood, God. Thank you for our heads, your protection all around us. Tonight, I pray that tonight we go higher and higher and higher in you, God. And I pray that it's done right now. Bless Pastor Free and Lady Free, God. Bless every member, God. Father, I pray past, present, and future, God. Thank you for those, God, who have even gone to a high calling, God. Father, whatever it might be, Father, I pray that everybody that ever walked through the palace, I still pray for them, God, because if you ever send them to the palace, you send them for a reason, and I pray that you cover them, you keep them, you protect them, and watch over them, God, and I pray they'll be the best they can be for you, not for people. Now, Father, I always ask you, God, to search me, and I said before the people, if ministry gets to be about me, if it gets to be where I am trying to do things in ministry that you didn't say, sit me down and raise up another. We've seen enough foolishness. We've seen enough arrogance. We've seen enough flesh. We need to see you, God. So, Father, I pray in this end time, and we are living in the end time, God. This is revelation in living revelation, God. I pray that, Father, that preachers will preach only the word of God. Prophets will line up with the word of God. This is not a hustle. It's not a trick. It's not manipulation, God. I pray that you expose what's not right, God. And I pray for every position. If it's not you, people can put you in a position, Father. But, Father, if you didn't put them in a the position, move them out, God. Come on, give us people that love people, God. I don't care how they look, how they smell, what they've gone through, who they lay with. Come on, help us love people. You loved us in our mess, and how dare we not love people in their mess. 
Father, you gave me time. Give them the time, God, to come to you. So, Father, let the words of my mouth, the meditation of my heart always be acceptable in your sight. Cover us with your blood. Now, Father, I pray for my family. God, I pray for the McDuffie family and the laws. Uh, I pray for all of them right now, God. I pray that you bless them right now in the name of Jesus, God. We don't know what's going on, but, Father, you know, bring peace to the situation right now, Father. Bless every bereaved family. Father, their mothers, God, have gone on to be with the Lord. Their kids are still here. Their fathers who are not here right now. We pray this man that got, got, got killed on the street, God. George, I pray that you'll bless his kids, God. I pray that, Father, that somebody will step in and fill in the gap, God. So, Father, help us tonight. Help us tonight. Bless every pastor, God. And for those, God, you've taken your hand. Because some ministry, you have literally taken your hands off of them, God. But, Father, let them get things right. Let them return to their first love. And we pray it be done in the powerful name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen, amen, amen. Amen, BB, I'm praying for you. I'm praying for you too. Beaumont, I'm praying for you. My ain't my, bro. Uh, my cousin Rashad, Travis, all of you are praying for you. Hey, my cousin Maxie, Joyce, all of you. Love you, love you. Thank you so much. Now listen, I'm getting ready to sign off. But listen, I want just for 30 seconds, let's send some hearts up. I just love to praise God. And those hearts going to go up and they're going up to Jesus Christ. So let's send some hearts up to Jesus right now. And this is going to just represent Jesus. I love you. Jesus, I appreciate you. Jesus, finish the work you started in me. Jesus, take over the wheel. Jesus, Jesus, come in my house. Jesus, forgive me for my sin. Jesus, come in my mind. Get in my finances. Get in my kids. Come on, Jesus. Jesus, get in my neighborhood. Jesus, go, prepare a way for me. Go, Jesus, give me a favor. Go, Jesus, give me my own company. Jesus, raise up my company. Give me more clients. Come on, Jesus, give me an idea. Father, you know respect a person. Father, make me the next millionaire. Make me the next billionaire. Father, I pray in the name of Jesus. There's no shortage of your blessing. Now, Father, we thank you that it's done tonight in the powerful name of Jesus Christ. Again, it's my pleasure to be in the service to you tonight. I pray that this word was a blessing to you. If it wasn't, just, just tag it away. Maybe one day you might need it. So again, I love you much, Pastor E. I love you. Keep praying for me. Pray for my kids. Pray for my mother. Pray for my family. And I'm praying for you. You pray for me. And we watch God change some stuff. Love you much. Kisses, kisses, kisses. Palace, love you so much. It's an honor and a privilege for me to be your pastor. I, I love God. I love his people. Listen, I'm nothing without him. Keep praying for me. Love you. Have a wonderful, wonderful night in Jesus' name. Amen.